Jared Dudley, a key member of the Lakers bench and part of their leadership core, a veteran, uh, said in an interview recently that LeBron James is the best leader he's seen in basketball and that that's what separates him from Giannis Antetokounmpo in the MVP race is that LeBron's leadership just on the court, off the court, being a team guy uh, makes him the clear MVP of the league, even though Giannis has better stats. All right, the question here is, is Jared Dudley exaggerating LeBron's leadership skills? Marcel, let's get us rolling. Yeah, he is. Yeah, and anybody who knows Jerry Dudley knows this is what he does, man. I love me some Jerry Dudley. That's the homie, but he always is selling them syrup sandwiches, man. Just putting sap <laughs> everywhere and just, just, just putting too much on everything. Call him Uncle Jemima out here. Just doing too much. <laughs> if you listen to what he was saying, he literally said this, as I quote, yeah, by statistics, Giannis is the MVP, but LeBron, come on. He's a guy's guy. He tells guys where to go on the court. Hey, we have team dinners with LeBron. What the hell does that have to do with him being the MVP? If Giannis can't win the MVP, having a better team and better numbers than he did when he won the MVP last year, then what is this? It's turning into a, a damn Twitter poll which is just likability and, hey, LeBron's popular, right? So let's insert him in there. Don't forget he's older. He's 35. I love me some Jared Dudley, but chill with the syrup sandwiches, man. It's Giannis's yeah. MVP to keep. It's not an exaggeration that uh, Jared Dudley is the greatest hype man you could ever hope to have. <laughs> but it is an exaggeration that LeBron James is the best leader in basketball. I understand what he's doing. He's trying to give LeBron an edge uh, to win MVP. But let's uh, let's look at some other leaders in the NBA. Not not at Giannis, but Steph Curry, LeBron James. And this is what I hate. I don't want to bag on LeBron James leadership. But if you're going to tell me he's the best leader in basketball and you're going to forget Steph Curry, then I have to. And the reality is, mm. what did Steph Curry do when he broke his hand this year? He busted his ass to get back and play on a last place team. When he wasn't practicing, he was on the bench at every game cheering these guys on that he probably is not going to see on next year's team. What did LeBron do when he was injured? He was walking into the arena uh -oh. drinking wine, and the second that he thought there was <laughs> nothing to play for, he shut it down for the rest of the season. I, I mean, I, I rest my case. If we're going to talk about leadership on and off the court, what Steph does on and off the court without trying to draw attention to himself, it's 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 not close. And I hate saying that because LeBron does so Le many good things on and off the court. But come on, we're going to compare leaders. Mm. Steph Curry is a runaway in this category. Rick, you make a hell of a point. I'm going to defend Jared Dudley. Jared Dudley can only evaluate what he's seen. He was here this year, and LeBron James has been tremendous as a leader this year. He wasn't there. He wasn't on the Lakers last year when LeBron was showing up drinking wine, and LeBron did everything to undermine <laughs> the head coach, Luke Walton, and LeBron was a disaster. Jared Dudley, based off what he's seen this year, to me has every right to make this argument. We have every right to disagree we can judge LeBron's entire body of work, and there are years where LeBron is the best leader, and there are years, I think, where he's a horrible leader and perhaps one of the worst. Marcellus, I'll disagree with you. I think these intangibles that Jared Dudley points out are worthy intangibles that slide the MVP trophy to LeBron James. This year, this season, LeBron has been incredible on the court, and even better as a teammate and a leader. And I think that gives him some added value in his MVP campaign over Giannis. Uh-uh, Will, I ain't going to let you get away with that. Nah, man, we partners in doing this. If I came out here um, stumbled through things, didn't do things efficiently, perfectly, whatever, but I made it up because we had a team dinner at my house. I made it up because, you know what, guys? I'm buying everybody the better gifts. Like, leadership... 
that's not intangibles. That's just a guy who's like a good dude. There are great dudes on every team, and they're not MVP candidates because, hey, you know what? He's a guy's guy. Like, I, that's like when people walk up to me, and I hear it all the time, when they talk to a celebrity or an athlete, five minutes into the conversation, they say, oh, my God, you're so down to earth. What the hell are you thinking? Like, he's a guy's guy. You walked in there with this reverence of LeBron James, like he's going to come from the clouds. LeBron James ties his shoes up like everybody else. So to give him credit for just being a guy, a teammate, to me shouldn't come into the conversation of Marcellus, being an MVP. The, we got to go. Marcellus, the man is averaging 25 points a game, leading the league in assists. He's averaging eight, nine rebounds a game, bunch of triple doubles. His team is leading the West. And it's Anthony Davis like, got better numbers on his own intangibles. team. just intangibles. Well, no, better numbers, but he ain't the better player. LeBron has been. Listen, you know, yeah, look, I love to criticize LeBron, but he's had an incredible season. He, he, he's been an incredible leader this year. <laughs> Hollywood James has worked this season. All right. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. And be sure to check out more of the best clips from Speak for Yourself or go watch a few segments from our other shows on FS1.